Okay, so in the first two videos, we looked at how to create tables, how to link fields across tables, how to have certain fields pre-populate with values, and how to impose certain controls, such as that a field is required when you're trying to create a new record. So in this one, we're going to start looking at queries. Queries are a little bit different because certain types of queries, the most basic forms, don't even change data. They don't add data. They simply look for data. So say you're trying to create a report and you need to know all transactions that were over $100 or all transactions for the month of January or all tickets created by Jane Doe. What you do is you create a query and, you, and there's a section that's called criteria. In the criteria, you then put that value. Only give me the records from Jane Doe. Only give me the transactions from uh, 2014, whatever. Now, there are certain types of queries that do modify tables. So let's take a look. In the upper left corner, you'll see create, as we've uh, clicked on in the last couple of videos. We've been dealing with tables here, but here are the queries. Now, when you click on query, this is what happens. You get a list of any tables that are in this database. So these two will match these two. For what it's worth, you don't need this. You can just drag and drop right from here into your query design area. So you can use this. I think it's just clutter. You can close that. So this is your canvas, so to speak. I don't think they officially call it that, but this is where you're gonna drag the tables in and then you take the fields from the tables and you drag them down here. So if you notice, there's actually several type of queries in here. So it says query type, make table. Well, that's the query that does create a table. Append, update, cross tab, delete. So there's actually multiple types of tables. Now the select query, the most basic type is the type we're gonna look at right now. And as I said, that type does not alter data. It simply brings up data. Now, once you run the query, you can actually make changes in the, in the values that you see, and it will indeed change the, under, the values in the underlying table. Having said that, um, right the, for this de demonstration, we're just going to do a search. We don't have much data, so it's going to seem a little silly, but again, it's the functionality that, that we're looking at. So you can click, drag, and drop right into your query. See how the tab says query one. If you point at the bottom, you can extend this out to see all the fields. So let's say we want to know all the, the ones that we don't possess. What have we not gotten yet? So there's a few things you can do. This asterisk, if you use the asterisk, then anytime you add a field to the table, it'll automatically get added to your query results. You may not want that because particularly if people take the data that you give them and they run other processes based on them, the presence of another ta uh, uh, the presence of a new field might mess them up. So use that with caution. So what I do is instead is I select I clicked on the top, hold shift, click on the button, typical Windows um, process for selecting multiple objects. Now it would see the same, this would seem like what I just described, but it's not. So if a new field gets added to the table, it will not be included down here. But if I use the asterisk, then yes, it would be included. So once you've selected these, you can just left click, drag, drop, and they all come down at once. Just so you know, you can click and drag these one at a time too. So we said that we wanted to know which ones we do not possess. So this is the possessed field. Now for what it's worth, this criteria row that I was talking about a few minutes ago, when you make a value in here, it will format it according to the type. So for purchase date, watch what happens. Say I put in 09 slash 10 slash 2017. Watch what happens. It puts those hash marks or pound signs around it because it's identifying it as a date. If it was a number, it wouldn't do that. It would just be a number. 
If it was text, it would surround it with quotes. So just by looking at the way this is formatted, that gives you information as to what type of data is in there. Now, even though Access identifies the data type as yes or no, for whatever reason, you don't put in yes or no, you put in true or false. Why? Because it's Access. You can actually also use negative one and zero. Again, why? Because it's Access. And oddly enough, negative one will bring the true results. So let's go ahead and type true. See how it doesn't put it in quotes? So it's not using the word true. So if we run, there we go. These are all checked. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare this to our table to make sure they truly are checked. Now, that might seem weird. That might seem redundant. But when you start running queries, you absolutely positively always always want to check your results. Anyone can run a query and get results and it can be completely in utter garbage because there may be some flaw in the logic that's used and you don't realize it. Or maybe there's some factor about the underlying table that you don't understand. And so because of that, you get bad results. So just because you run a query and you get results does not mean they are correct. Always, always, always do some kind of manual check to make sure that your results are correct. Not to mention that you may find results to be different than ones someone else is expecting. So someone may say, hey, we're expecting a 100% match with this data. And you come back and say, okay, well, only 50% matched. They're going to say, well, why? So if you're not examining your data, you're not going to know why. Okay, so. RE Rev 2 is checked. Yes, it is. Mysteria checked. Yes, it is. Doorway to Yesterday. Yes, it is. And Jacob's Step Letter. Yes, it is. Okay, so we go back to our query. And I'm not going to do it here, but these fields can all be edited. Because of that, since these fields can be edited, if I make the change here, it will change it in the table. So we're not going to do that, but I do want you to know that this data is live and that you can actually lock this down so it comes as read only. So your, res your results are read only. But by default, it's not. I can make the change. So we go back to design view. And let's do the opposite. Let's do false, and let's run it. And there's the other three, legend, future, and cap. Legend, future, and cap. They're not checked. Absolutely perfect. That is the basis or basics of a select type query. And now let's just save our work. So it's important to note we're not saving the results. We're saving the query. So we're saving the logic, not the results. And that's important to distinguish because some queries may give you 10,000 or 20,000 rows and might take a few minutes to run. If you're saving the query, you're not saving those results. So you're going to have to separately copy that out, which I can show you how to do. That's pretty easy. But for the moment, let's save our results. So let's click on the little floppy disk. And it's really a best practice to append or preface the letters Q, R, Y to your queries. And the reason why is that way, when you're uh, searching or typing in the name of, of um, what you're looking for, the name of the query, you always know it starts with Q, R, Y because it's possible your queries and tables might have similar naming. So let's call this Q, R, Y underscore Possessed underscore status. So it's telling us it's a query and it's searching for the possessed status. And we'll click on OK. And now it shows up over here under the category query. Now, as I mentioned, the query is just the logic. It is the criteria 
it is the process that will be run to give you your results. It's not the actual results, the actual rows, the actual records, you still need to manually save. And there's a couple ways to do it. If it's a small data set, you can just click in the upper left corner, right click, copy and paste, or control C to copy. And you can just paste that into an Excel spreadsheet. So you just open Excel spreadsheet, click on the cell that you want it to go into, and you just paste. And it's that easy. Or the slightly more technical way, and, and there's nothing uh, illegitimate about this. If it's a small data set, it's faster just to copy and paste. But as far as procedurally, you can right click on the query, choose export, and then you can choose Excel, you can choose to export to another access database, text, whatever you want. So you can click on Excel by default. It's giving the name of the file is going to be the name of the query. It's asking what's the file format. It's asking, do you want to export with data? Uh, excuse me, do you ex want to export the data with formatting? Be careful about this because if it's a large set, I believe it's it's if it's right around 64,000 rows, I believe it will fail. So be careful about exporting with uh, formatting. So we'll, in this case, we'll say OK. And save export steps, and we're done. I'm not going to go out to it, but it's now saved it. So if you go to that, lo whatever location popped up for you, if you go there, it will be there in Excel spreadsheet. Now, I mentioned that you can make a table. So since it's really just a hop, skip, and a jump away, let's do that as well. So we go back to design view. And by default, as I said, it's select. If you click on make table, you can either choose a pre-existing table or see if you click on this, gives you table names, or you can create a whole new one. So let's call this, um, well, let's, let's drop the word possessed. Let's just say uh, currently owned. Something like that. Although right now it's set to false. And it defaults to the current database, so that's fine. So you've named the table that you want to create. And we click on OK. So let's change this to true, just so we're being honest about it. And now when we run it, you're going to see something slightly different happen. Run. You're about to paste four rows into a new table. Yes. And see what happened? You created a table, currently owned. So in the more advanced stages of working with Access, you could automate some of these processes. So maybe there is a monthly table you want created. So owned as of 09-01-2017, owned 10-01-27, 11-01-2017, that kind of thing. So uh, so you've seen a select table, you've seen make a table. Let's hold off on the other two. Those require a little bit more explanation, whereas make table, you can see it's basically just a select table that then automatically saves the results. That way you don't have to copy, paste, or, or uh, format, do, do a formatted export. Okay, so I think that should do it for this video. I hope this was helpful. Uh, the next video, as I said, we'll probably deal with the other two types of, well, two of the other types of queries, there's a few. And then at that point, I think we'll dive into forms because as I said, forms are, uh, that's how you really create a user-friendly interface. You give structure, you give process flow, you hide away everything that the user doesn't need to see. That way, even someone who doesn't know anything about a database, can be potentially really, really good with the database, really effective with it. So I think that's about it for this video. I hope it's been helpful, and I hope you stick around for the next few.